I'm not happy. Those of you who follow the Facebook page will know I had a slight accident on the way home from work this week. Some nugget took me out on the Triumph, so that is now smashed up in a recovery yard waiting to hear if it's repairable or not. So I'm back to the Jigsaw. So there she is, Old Faithful. Identical pretty much to the one I took around the world. I keep leaving the Jigsaw sitting and not riding it for months and months and months on end. And every time I go back, the battery's dead, so I end up buying a new battery. So I got a bit tired of that and uh, ended up buying this, the Optimate 3. Um, I thought I'd give that a bash. Good bit of kit. I left it for about three days, to be honest with you, and it recovered the battery. And it now works good as new, so far. Touch wood. Well worth doing rather than spending 70, 80 quid a pop on a new battery. But it's a couple other bits I've had to do uh, tyre pressures, check the tyre pressures, they were down about 10 to 15 actually, the bike was riding like a bag of poo. I actually put some air in the tyres and lo and behold it rides quite well. And the final thing I need to do now is the chain, the chain's quite slack. Some people don't know how to do it, I may as well just run through quickly how to do it. Two minute job. So how do you know if your chain's too loose? Well look, that, way too loose. And another good identifier is, this is pretty dangerous, if you can actually move that off your sprocket, it's too loose. So we need to tighten it up. So you're gonna to have to loosen off big spindle nut here. And if like me, if you have these Lightroom chain adjusters, but it's a quick job. Let's get on with it. For the jigsaw, you're gonna need this 36 millimeter socket. And that will go on to your torque wrench. Get them in Halfords, the big one here. I think this is quite exy, this is about 70, 80. But you need them if you're gonna do this yourself. Right, first off, to loosen off the spindle, you're better off keeping the bike on the ground. And then off we go. Now, on normal bikes, you'll have like a locking nut here, which I have to loosen off. And there'll be a, like a screw here, which I have to turn. And you push them back at equal increments. And that pushes the spindle back and that in turn tightens the chain. With these Lightroom chain adjusters, you haven't got any of that. It's this thing at the back here that you have to worry about. There's a locking nut under there. You loosen that off. Turning these in at equal increments on both sides. A nice little gauge there, so you can keep track on both sides and make sure they're both equal. Good bits of kit, these Lightroom thing. I'll put a link down below. They're well worth getting. Make the chain adjust and nice and easy. Well, let's crack on. Not essential to have a paddock stand, but it does make it easier. And now we just need to turn these equal amounts, both sides, push the wheel back and that tightens the chain. Now this chain is really slack. Normally you wouldn't need much at all. We'll see how this goes. So, try the other side. Then just give the chain a quick still really loose. Once you put it down, when you take it off the paddock stand and you put it back down on the ground, that tightens the chain even more and it tightens it even more when you tighten up the spindle. So you have to leave quite a bit of play here initially. It's all trial and error and the more you do it the better you'll get it. So I'll just pop the bike down off the stand now, see what it's like sitting on the ground, tighten up the spindle and see how we are. As you can see, that's much better, and that'll tighten up even more once I tighten the spindle. So let's give that a bash. For these, you have to set it for 100, 100 newton meters. And off we go. There you go, that's it. Quick check of the chain tension. And that is pretty much perfect for me. It's not quite hitting this. Much better. Job done. Easy. Even I can do this one. Right, 
right folks, time for a bit of Q&A time. We've got loads on here. Oh, out of the way, Beryl. That was Beryl. Okay, Bruce, what happened to the bike after your around the world trip? And that's from Jock Stare on Facebook. Jock, I've still got it. I've still got the beast and will be built into the new kitchen. Not my idea. That's Mrs. Teapot, actually. That's why I married her. Just needs a service, need a change of fluids, and it would go again. Engine is faultless. I may actually even took the thing for a burrow when we were up at Oulton Park. He said the engine was as tight as a nut. Well, that's not his exact words. How safe is it to do a around the world trip on your own did you ever feel scared being at a certain place on your own and that's from Salman Afzal on Facebook Salman it's a difficult one mate it, it really does depend it depends where you go obviously I had major issues in Mauritania and West Africa but there are countless people who've been through there with no problems and have nothing but great things to say about the place and the people interestingly Sam Manicum he put a little post up on his Facebook apparently there were a couple of travelers overlanders in Brazil who were following the sat-nav and the sat-nav obviously took them on the, the most direct route and it took them straight through a favela. At least one of them has been shot dead, if not both, unfortunately. So it's just things like that. You have to have a bit of common sense about it, mate. But don't let that put you off, please. It sounds terrible, but don't let it put you off. Just get out there, travel, meet people, see for yourself. It's just the best feeling, it really is. Go for it. Hey Bruce, what was your most exciting experience experience while on your travels and this is from Zach Bradford on Facebook my nephew. Uh, Zach, there were so many, you know, what starts off at your, your common ground, what you're, you're used to, anything outside of that becomes, wow, what an event. My time in Laos, when I was right up in the mountains, off of the road, off the beaten track, just on dirt track, that for me was a real personal mission because I didn't know when the next fuel was, I didn't know where the road was going, I didn't know if it would actually take me anywhere or if it just ended. It was... A, a great time, a scary time, but I look back on it now and I think, you know, that that was one of my highlights from the trip. When you push yourself outside of your own comfort zones. Does having no hair affect your adventurousness? From Chris Ainley on Facebook. Chris, I think it just makes you more awesome. How has your opinion of the adventure motorcycling community changed, if at all, since you've returned? And that's from Lee Davies on Facebook. Well, Lee, uh, I think certainly a little little bit of the uh, aloofness has gone. Is that a word? Aloofness? You know, the mystery, the mystique, that has gone because I'm a normal bloke. I held a lot of these people in very high regard and I still do, they're great people, but I've gone and I've done it. Anyone can do it. If you've, if you've got it here, it doesn't matter where you go, what you do, what you take, what you do it on, you will do it. It's there. That's where it is. Overcome this and you'll overcome anything else. And I think that's pretty true in life, to be honest with you. How's my opinion of the community changed? This is a bit pot calling the kettle black here because I am opinion I am stubborn, but I like to think I've got a fairly open and balanced viewpoint on life. I've seen a lot of the best and a lot of the worst of people in a lot of different situations through my job, through life experience, as a lot of people will. But I think there are some people who have a very focused mindset and a very focused opinion on a narrow degree of subjects and they don't really open their eyes to the other options that are available. Some have surprised me, but others have it. <laughs> and I think that's all I'll say. What cameras do you use on your bike and helmet? From Gerard Allen on Facebook. For the helmet cam I used to use the GoPros but they were just totally unreliable on my trip. I used the HD Drift Ghost S. Uh, nice and simple to mount. It's got the variable lens here. You can wire in your mic on there with no problems at all. All but the most torrential of prolonged downpours. And you can get a waterproof um, back that you put on here but then you can't wire in the audio. The cockpit cam the one when you see shining back at me that is the GoPro session and then I also have a GoPro 3 Plus but I don't use that much um, and the trusty iPhone that's great as well what are the basic essentials for long term travels on a motorbike that's from John Wilkins on Facebook well contrary to what I thought when I first left I go as absolute 
bare minimum as possible. Now, tools to fix a puncture go absolute as minimum as possible. That's what I'd suggest. Basic tools, your phone, a credit card of some kind, so you've got the cash. Where's your lobster then? Off you go. Wow, I like this one. Have you come across any internet trolls on social media who don't like your approach or what you are doing? How do you handle them? That's from Gordon Stewart on Facebook. Gordon, I hadn't up until last week when I started to use Reddit. Now, Reddit is a fantastic way of driving traffic through to your uh, YouTube channel, your website, places like that, but it is full of keyboard warriors. And I've got a fairly tough skin, but I was pretty shocked by the ferocity and the venom that comes your way at times. There are some people on there who are pretty, pretty sad individuals, to be honest with you. There can't be too much going on in their lives. A lot of personal attacks on my mother, believe it or not, and uh, on me. That's hard to take. If I find them, if I meet them, I will have issues with them. I will have something to say. You've just got to let it flow over your head. As the old adage goes, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. They don't know you. Who cares what they think, mate? That's, it's hard because I feel sick at what they've said, and I am enraged by what they said. But life goes on, do you know what I mean? I'm not going to lose sleep over them, so whatever. They're just jealous. I wouldn't worry about them. I don't worry about them, but I'll enjoy it if I meet them. We'll leave it at that. Last one for today. When are you going to buy a GS? And that's from Ian Morrison on Facebook. Ian, did Mickey Pierce put you up to that? If the Triumph had been written off in this crash, yes, I would have got a GS. But it's not, and I'm happy with the Triumph. We'll leave it at that. But never say never. Okay, folks, that'll do me for this week. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Hit the subscribe button. It really does help me a lot. If you want to be notified when a new video comes up, hit the alarm bell. If you don't, just hit subscribe, and that's that. That, you won't be bothered again. It's great to have you along. Please remember to keep sharing, keep spreading the word, and remember, live your life. See you next week.